World Hijab Day. Yes, it's a thing. Apparently, it's been around since 2013, but I'm just hearing about it now. And by the way, I'm sure this episode won't be divisive at all. Discussing Islam, what could go wrong? So probably 50-50 chance you might not agree with something I say. But I should warn you, if you downvote this video, I've decided it means you have a micro penis. Oh, you're female? Macro clitoris. Or clitoris. Tomato, tomato. <coughs> what a way to start off the show. Anyway, on a serious note, with the exception of that recent interview slash conversation I had with Seamus from the Free Thought Prophet, it really has been a long time since I discussed anything having to do with Islam on the show. And it's always kind of a nerve-wracking tightrope walk. You criticize Islam, you catch shit. Don't criticize it enough, you catch shit. Seemingly you can't win, so might as well just be honest and say what you think. And let the proverbial chips fall where they may. So I first became aware of this whole thing via a tweet from Thinking Atheist host Seth Andrews. You're probably already familiar, but in case you're not... Seth Andrews is a really well-liked guy, a very popular figure in the quote-unquote atheist community, former fundamentalist Christian and Christian radio host, who's now a staunch atheist. He's very outspoken in his defense of atheism and criticism of religion, but I think most would still agree that he's nevertheless a really pleasant and rather measured individual. So not the type of guy who thoughtlessly hurls verbal grenades or makes inflammatory statements on social media for the heck of it. He definitely took a strong stance on this whole World Hijab Day thing, and I'll read his tweet now. The hijab isn't a symbol of liberation, nor should it be celebrated. People have the right to wear what they wish, but let's not actively promote a tool for female dehumanization and oppression because we've bought the lie that it makes progressives more quote-unquote woke. So strong words, and this will probably mean that I'll catch shit too, not sure why I'm swearing so much tonight, but generally speaking, I agree with him. I think if people want to wear the hijab as a symbol of ethnic or cultural pride in where they come from, that's fine, but we shouldn't pretend it's a symbol of liberation. I think I get the spirit behind it. It seems like it's Muslim women and their non-Muslim counterparts, supporters, or allies trying to send the message that it's alright to be Muslim or that you can wear traditional Muslim garb and still be a strong, empowered woman. And whatever issues I may have with Islam as an atheist, I still think the spirit of the message is good, that you shouldn't be made to feel ashamed of where you come from, your culture, your background, etc. That you shouldn't be made to feel like, quote-unquote, the other for wearing traditional clothing. And I agree that people shouldn't be guilted or demonized for wearing a hijab. As Seth Andrews says, quote-unquote, people have the right to wear what they wish. Um, or at least ideally that should be the case. Depends where you live, I guess. Uh, some parts of the quote-unquote Muslim world, no, you don't have the right. Women are forced to wear the hijab or other forms of traditional Muslim garb, which is part of the controversy surrounding this whole World Hijab Day thing, especially when it's presented as a vehicle for female empowerment. I think in Iran, specifically, the wearing of the hijab is compulsory. And in other Muslim countries, it might not be the hijab specifically, but as I was saying, uh, some other sort of traditional Muslim garb or covering may be required, such as the abaya in Saudi Arabia. And then there's lots of Islamic regions where there's no explicit laws regarding the wearing of the hijab, but where women are still expected to conform to Islamic ideas of modesty. Sudan, for example, doesn't have an explicit law concerning the hijab, but does have a somewhat vaguely worded quote-unquote public order law that calls for up to 40 lashes and or a fine for wearing a quote-unquote obscene outfit. 
Then I guess the flip side is you have places like Morocco where the wearing of headscarves is falling out of favor, but it's not forbidden by law. And then you have places like Syria where face veils, not necessarily the hijab by itself, are banned in universities. Turkey, which is officially secular, had a ban on the hijab in universities as well as libraries and government buildings up until 2013. But laws against traditional Muslim head coverings have become more lax since the takeover of the more conservative AKP, the so-called Justice and Development Party. And I think that's what really kind of confuses the matter. It's kind of a region by region and an eye of the beholder kind of thing. Depending where you live, the hijab might be something you're forced to wear by an oppressive theocracy, or it might be a traditional garment with cultural or religious significance, frowned upon or even banned by secular leadership. I actually went to the World Hijab Day website, and you can scroll through and see pictures of people wearing their hijabs, accompanied by quotes. And there was one woman, very white or European looking, not that that necessarily means much. You can technically be any race and also be Muslim. But she said something along the lines of, and I'm really paraphrasing here, that she's not Muslim, but she supports the hijab. And there she was in her picture wearing one with a big smile plastered on her face. And I do personally find something obscene or off-putting about that. I thought someone responding to Seth Andrews on Twitter made a great point. Paraphrasing once again, they said something to the effect that maybe the hijab shouldn't be celebrated until there's no place left on earth where a woman is forced to wear one. If you're someone who was born and raised Muslim and wearing a hijab is all you've ever known, I get it. I get why you want to see the wearing of one normalized or more accepted. But if you're a non-Muslim woman, I, I get it. You probably think it's a show of solidarity, but maybe you should think twice before donning and promoting a garment that some women are forced to wear. And with that, thanks for listening and until next week. <laughs> <laughs>